All right, hey guys, and welcome to another Track Talk Tuesday edition. So this Tuesday, we're pretty much gonna be talking about running on islands, or in other words, running a race kind of by yourself, but not really, and then also racing by yourself too. Um, to preface this topic and how it came about, this past weekend I raced at Texas Relays, which was loads of fun. Um, kind of what I expected, a little disappointed, at the same time and awkward I don't know I just had an awkward feeling <laughs> uh, but to piggyback off that when I got there I was the first person that checked in which is always super scary because you don't know if other people are actually gonna show up or be there so being the first person and the fact that it was like 30 to 45 minutes before we were racing and checking in and not saying anybody else checked in was very awkward and very scary and I was like oh my god I'm gonna be racing in this race by myself in front of like 30,000 people and it's like then you start thinking like what if I fall start what if I fall what if um, I don't know some naked person runs through the middle of my race because they just want to be funny um, so things I don't really think about all that stuff but I was thinking mainly like oh my god I have to run this race by myself which is really weird <laughs> and not fun and it's kind of embarrassing because everyone's just watching you and then it's it's just really weird to watch somebody run a race by themselves because you're like, why wouldn't they just put them in another race? Um, so yeah, I got there, checked in. I was the only one checked in, so I just went around my normal warm-up, uh, went warmed up, and then when I got back to the area that you were supposed to get, well, we were supposed to go, there was another girl there, so that was cool because now there was two of us, so there were two of us running in this race. And <laughs> we're sitting in the like bleachers area or whatever, and so we're just like, it's just two of us. And we're like, yeah, I guess it's just me and you. So somebody's gonna get first and somebody's gonna get second. <laughs> um, which is cool because you could say, technically we could be like, oh yeah, I got first at the Texas Relays or I got second at the Texas Relays. But no one knows out of how many people and nobody really honestly is gonna check. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. But anyways, so there were two of us and then two more girls ended up showing up. So now there are four of us. Which was awesome because it's like okay cool we got a crowd uh, uh, four out of eight people showed up <laughs> to the to the race um i don't know what happened to those other people they just didn't want to come or texas relays didn't let them know they made it in time not exactly sure um so now there's four of us and then this is where it's like super awkward because now there's enough people to be in the race where it's like all right cool we got a cool crowd but the only like setback was I was in lane eight and then they were in lanes two three four so <laughs> instead of like reseating us so that we're all like maybe lanes five six seven four three or eight however you want to do that um instead of us like reseating us and putting us all in the middle so that we're next to each other and we can feed off each other's um energy and pace and things of that nature they just keep us in our lanes so they're like way over here and i'm like way over here and so i was just i felt like i was pretty much running by myself because they were so far away out of your peripheral i mean i can see lane four but it's not the same as if it was if the person next to me was in lane seven so i was kind of out of my element i felt like i was at practice which is never a good thing because it's like if you're in you're in practice mode like you're thinking about things that you probably shouldn't be thinking about when you're in a race <laughs> and then um i just wasn't there like i didn't seize the opportunity that was given to me which kind of sucks and even though i ran a fast time close to my pr from last year i still left the race feeling that i didn't put it all out there or like i could have done better or the situation could have been better like they it just everything could have been better and so going into that race and thinking like all of these things was not healthy well not that it wasn't healthy but i probably shouldn't have been thinking of all that stuff i should have been more constant i should have concentrated more on the fact that i was in the race and i had an opportunity to show up and to seize the opportunity that i was given at hand um so what was it? uh oh yeah so <laughs> Running by yourself. So one thing that I would change about the race, I don't regret anything, but the one thing that I will do next time I'm in a situation like that is completely um, disregard all elements that are going on around me. So I know that we learn to run in your own lane, but 
being in such a high stakes situation, it sounds like I'm, I don't know, robbery. <laughs> and being in that situation, it's nice to run with people who are faster or just as fast as you because you, it puts you in a situation to run faster and perform better, if that makes any sense. But you're still running in your own lane. So you're aware of your surroundings, but you're in your own race and you're not running someone else's race. It's two totally different things. When you run someone else's race, they run their race. And if you try to run their race, you're not them. So it's not gonna happen. But if you run your race and they're running their race and you know how you are as a person, you know if you can go faster or if you need to stay in your comfort zone in pretty much your training zone, if that makes any sense. I hope that makes sense. That might have like gone over some heads, but whatever. Um, so being the fact that I was in my own lane and I was in my own race, I was not in my own race, if that makes any sense, because I was thinking about all the possible scenarios that could have made this race a lot better while I was running. I had a horrible start. My hurdling felt crappy. Movement in between was really good, between hurdles like four and five, but it could have been better because my positioning on and off the hurdle was not where I felt it should have been. And then um, the fact that I didn't feel like I got the right momentum from the blocks to hurdle one was also something I was thinking about when I was running. <laughs> and then every now and then I could see someone out of the, out of like the side of um, in my peripheral, which was nice because I'm like, oh cool, like they're right there and I'm way over here. <laughs> and something I probably shouldn't have been worried about, um, but I was. And so I just, I guess I just went with it. So um, what I will say is if you are ever in that situation, ignore everything and perform in your race. You're supposed to be running in your lane as it is anyway, and you're supposed to run your own race, and you're supposed to be so focused on your own race that you don't know what's going on outside of you anyway. Um, so take what's given to you and perform. Like, Don't worry about better situations or how the situation could have been better. You're handed a situation, and how you handle that situation is a reflection of your character. So my character showed that I don't know how to handle running in my own race and I was thinking about other things so for the next race I need to learn how to handle um, running in my own race because it's clear that that's a possibility and that's something that might happen so um, a tip I will give is to act like there are people next to you um, normally when I'm in practice mode I tell myself that it's always I'm going for the gold every practice every start I've ever taken I always say this is for the gold um, and that time I did it. <laughs> I didn't say it at all. <laughs> I was just thinking like, oh my god, why am I way over here? All these people are looking at me. I'm in my own race. I hope I don't get dead last. I hope I don't fall over a hurdle, which are things that I don't normally ever think about. But because I had never been in a situation like that, I didn't know how to handle it. So now I've been in a situation like that, and now I understand the next time I'm in a situation like that, not to think about those things and to take the race for what it is instead of what, what, for what it could be. Um, so yeah, that's all I have. Um, running on an island is not fun, but learn how to make it fun and learn how to benefit from the situation at hand. Run your own race, go for the gold, no matter if you're running in a heat by yourself or you're running in a heat with people that are on the other side of the track. And now that I think about it, I ran another race where I, <laughs> this happened one other time where this year at um, one of the indoor races. It was like me and then another girl. And I was in lane five and she was in lane like one. And I actually ended up running a PR of mine indoor for that race. So it's very clear that you can PR on your own. I don't know what I was doing. It, at Texas Relays or whatever. Anyways, I still had a good race, not to knock it or anything. I ran a fast time, but it's kind of like, you know when you feel you could have done better, even though you did really good? Um, that's kind of how I left the race. And partly it's because I don't feel my focus was there. So next time I'm in a situation like that, I'm going to learn how to, I'm gonna recognize the situation, I'm gonna analyze it, and then I'm going to say this is for the gold and to run my own race. So hopefully you guys learned something from my experience running on islands and you can take something away and 
look to move forward or know what to do if you're ever in that situation. And so that's all I have for this Track Talk Tuesday. And I look forward to talking with you guys next week. Ha <laughs>